Now, let's have a look at the third text of the 2015 SATS Reading Comprehension paper. We can see that we have what looks like a story called California's Unlikely Warriors. And we have pictures of ladybirds and of oranges growing on a tree. Now, if we read the introduction, this text is about how ladybirds helped farmers in California to get rid of a plague of tiny insects that were killing their orange trees. Now, what I like to do after looking at the pictures, title and introduction is go straight to the answer booklet and read the first question. Question 29. How long ago did the plague of scale insects attack America? So, let's start reading the text. Over 100 years ago in America, Californian orchards were almost destroyed by a plague of thousands of tiny creatures called scale insects. These tiny sap-sucking bugs were attacking the orange trees and ruining all the fruit. So we can see from the first line that this was happening over 100 years ago. So our answer is over 100 years, or more than 100 years. And we have to be really specific to get the mark for this question. So we can't write 100 years ago, we need to write over 100 years ago. Question 30. What did the scale insects attack? If we read the first paragraph again, we can see that it was Californian orchards that were almost destroyed, and these tiny sap-sucking bugs were attacking the orange trees and ruining all the fruit. So, Californian orchards were being attacked, or we could write that they were attacking orange trees or fruit trees. Again, we need to be specific. We can't just write that they were attacking trees because the text specifically says orange trees. And we can't just write fruit. Question 31. The scale insects sound like an army. Find and copy two words in the first two paragraphs that support this idea. So, for find and copy questions, we need to read the text that it tells us to read. So read the first two paragraphs, and as we're reading, we can underline any words that might support the idea that the insects sound like an army. So let's read the first two paragraphs. Over 100 years ago in America, Californian orchards were almost destroyed by a plague of thousands of tiny creatures called scale insects. These tiny sap-sucking bugs were attacking the orange trees and ruining all the fruit. So that's the first paragraph, but the question asks us to find words in the first two paragraphs. So let's read this paragraph as well. Scale insects had never been seen in America before. So where had they come from? Eventually, the invasion was traced to some acacia plants that had been shipped in from Australia. So, we need to choose two of the words that we've underlined. Notice, as we were reading the text, we underlined any words that we think might make it sound like the bugs or the scale insects were like an army. So, first we have destroyed... That reminds us of an army, because armies can destroy things. Then we have a plague. A plague is a word for a disease, so that doesn't quite remind us of an army. Though it's a negative word, it's not specifically related to an army. So we perhaps don't want to write plague. And then thousands. Well, while thousands is a, shows that it's a large number of these creatures, and armies tend to be large, the word thousands doesn't necessarily remind us of an army. So, though we can consider the word thousands, that probably isn't one that we want to choose. Next, we have attacking, and that does remind us of an army, because an army will attack other countries or other armies. 
so attacking might be one of our words. Then we have ruining. Perhaps armies will ruin what they attack, so it's related, but again perhaps not quite as good as attacking. And finally, we've underlined the word invasion. So an army invades when it attacks another country. So the word invasion definitely reminds us of an army. So we can have invasion, we could have attacking, or we could have destroyed. We could also accept in the mark scheme writing thousands or ruining, because those the, though these words are not quite as closely related to the idea of an army, there are still often thousands of people in an army and an army might ruin what it attacks. But the best words that we have are invasion, attacking and destroyed. So each of the words that we have written here will get us a mark for this question. So that's two marks altogether for two words. And notice with these find and copy questions, the two words will not be two words that are next to each other. They'll be two words in different sentences or in different parts of a sentence. Question 32. It was important to find a solution to the plague of insects quickly. Explain why. So to explain why, we need to think what the insects were doing. If we go back to the text, we already know that the insects were attacking the orange trees and ruining all the fruit. So we could write that as our answer. But just to check, let's read on and read the next paragraph to see if there's any more details here. The scale insects spread so quickly that unless something was done to get rid of them, the whole fruit industry in California would be ruined. The situation was so bad that Californian fruit growers were pulling up their fruit trees and burning them to destroy the pests. Soon, the takeover started to spread to other parts of America. Different kinds of pesticides were used to try to kill the insects, but none of them worked. By now, thousands of orange trees were dying. So, as we were reading, we've underlined the key points that will help us to answer the question. We know that they were attacking the orange trees and ruining all the fruit. Thousands of orange trees were dying. The scale insects spread quickly and had started to spread to other parts of America, and the whole fruit industry in California would be ruined unless something was done. So, to explain why, to get the mark for this question, we can answer that orange or fruit trees were being killed or orchards being destroyed. We can write that the fruit industry was on the point of being destroyed, we can write that the problem was spreading to other parts of America or other parts of the country, or we can mention the speed at which the insects were spreading, so they were spreading quickly. Question 33. Before ladybirds were introduced, how did the fruit growers try to solve the problem of scale insects? So they haven't told us yet about ladybirds being introduced, but they have already mentioned how fruit growers try to solve the problem. If we go over what we've already read, we know that fruit growers were pulling up their fruit trees and burning them to destroy the pests, so destroy the scale insects. And different kinds of pesticides were used to try to kill the insects, but none of them worked. So, to get the mark for this question, we just need to make a reference to the fact that the fruit growers tried to destroy the trees by burning them or using pesticides. So we could write pulling up the fruit trees then burning them, or they burnt the fruit trees, or the fruit growers used pesticides or bug spray. The mark scheme says do not accept reference only to them pulling up or chopping down the trees. So, we need to explain that they tried to burn them as well. Question 34a. Look at page 8. What did Mr. Riley suggest to solve the problem of scale insects? 
So let's keep on reading page 8 from where we were up to. A professor from the Department of Agriculture, Charles V. Riley, so that will be Mr. Riley, suggested that scale insects might be controlled by introducing other insects to feed on them. So that's our answer for the first part of this question. We need to refer to Mr. Riley suggesting that other insects could be introduced to kill or eat the scale insects. So for example, other insects might be found to eat the scale insects or introducing other insects to eat the pests. Question 34b. How did other people react to Mr. Riley's suggestion? So let's keep on reading. But no one listened to him. No one had ever heard such a theory before. They thought it was a crazy idea and laughed at his suggestion. This made Mr. Riley more determined. He was sure that he was right. So we need to point out that no one listened to him. People thought it was a crazy idea or people laughed at him. So we need to refer to other people not listening to him or reacting with scorn or disbelief. Question 35. In the paragraph beginning, in Australia, Mr. Kobele visited. The ladybirds are described as feasting on the scale insects. What does the word feasting suggest about the ladybirds? So we haven't got to this paragraph yet. So either, if we have time, we can continue reading from where we're up to, or if we're running out of time, we might just want to skip to the paragraph that it mentions. So, as we've got some time, let's keep on reading. He had heard that in Australia, scale insects were much less of a problem. So, why was this? Why were the Australians not suffering the same damage to their trees and plants? Mr. Riley predicted that the Australian scale insects must have a natural enemy that was reducing their numbers. Eventually, he was able to persuade a researcher called Alfred Kobele to go to Australia to find out if this was the case. In Australia, Mr. Kobele visited, so this is the paragraph that the question mentioned, Mr. Kobele visited many of the trees that attracted scale insects and made a surprising discovery. A large number of small colourful beetles were living in them. They were ladybirds and everywhere he found scale insects on the fruit trees of Australia, he found ladybirds feasting on them. Mr. Kobele scooped up as many of the little red and black creatures as he could and sent them back to California. So if we think back to what we've read, here we were told scale insects must have a natural enemy that was reducing their numbers, so killing them. And then in the paragraph that the question mentions, we're told about the surprising discovery that ladybirds were feasting on the scale insects. So we can guess that feasting must mean eating. But to get the mark for this question, we can't just write feasting. We need to think, why have they used the word feasting rather than eating? So we could write that they ate a huge quantity of scale insects. For example, that the ladybirds ate and ate and stuffed themselves, so that they ate a lot. Or we could write that they ate the scale insects quickly. Or that they enjoyed eating the scale insects. But the mark scheme says, do not accept simple statements that the ladybirds ate them or were hungry. Question 36. Look at the second paragraph on page 9, beginning, When the Unlikely Warriors. How does the writer emphasise the success of the ladybirds? Explain fully, referring to the text in your answer. So, we need to read the paragraph, and as we read, we can underline anything that shows that the ladybirds were successful. So let's find the paragraph, When the Unlikely Warriors. 
When the unlikely warriors were set free in one of the dying Californian orange groves, they cleared all the scale insects from the trees in just a few days. The original 350 ladybirds sent from Australia multiplied at such a staggering rate that by June that year, over 10,000 were available to be distributed to fruit growers across California. The speed at which the pests were wiped out was astonishing. One grower, who had abandoned all hope for his young orange trees, was able to harvest two to three boxes of oranges from each tree by the end of the growing season. So there's a lot in this paragraph that really emphasises the success of the ladybirds in wiping out the scale insects. They're described as warriors, and warriors are usually soldiers or people who are very successful in battle. It says that they cleared all the scale insects from the trees in just a few days, so emphasising that it took just a few days for them to achieve what was needed. It says that they multiplied at a staggering rate, so the word staggering again emphasises how successful they were, and more evidence for that is that by June that year, over 10,000 were available, even though there had only be, been 350 at first. They were distributed to fruit growers across California, so because they were successful, because people realised that the ladybirds could do the job, they were distributed across California. It says the speed at which the pests were wiped out was astonishing, so using, again, a word which really emphasises the speed, again supporting the idea that it took just a few days to wipe them out. And also, one grower who had abandoned all hope. So one grower who didn't think that they were going to be successful was still able to harvest two to three boxes. So there's a lot of information in this paragraph that we can explain. We can make the point that the speed at which they destroyed the scale insects was astonishing and took just a few days. So remember, for explain questions, you need to make a point and then give evidence from the text to support your point. You could also write about the speed at which the ladybirds multiplied or the size of the increase. So we can quote the author saying that they multiplied at a staggering rate or we could reference the fact that the increase was from 350 to 10,000. So again, we'd make the point that they multiplied quickly, and then we'd give evidence from the text to support that point. We could write about the ruthlessness or thoroughness of the ladybirds, so we could quote that they cleared all the scale insects or wiped out, or that they were unlikely warriors, we could point the surprise at the result or unlikelihood of the success, so that's the word unlikely, or the fact that they were able to harvest two to three boxes. Or we could mention the change in fortune for the growers, so that they had abandoned all hope, but were still able to harvest two or three boxes. So here's an example of an answer that would get three marks. It's a staggering to show the increase in ladybirds was really fast. He also says the insects were cleared out really quickly. So here in the first sentence, they've made the point that the increase was really fast, so they multiplied quickly. And then they've got something from the text, so they've got it say staggering to support that point. So here they've made a point and they've provided evidence. So then there's another sentence, he also says the insects were cleared out really quickly. So here that's a point, but perhaps not as much evidence, but still that gets three marks. Because if you make a point and give evidence, and then make another point, that's three marks for your answer. Or we could have, it says unlikely warriors, to show everyone was surprised at how well they did, and they did it really quickly. So they've made the point that everyone was surprised, 
and given a quote to support that point of view, and they've made another point that they did it really quickly. Question 37. How has this text about ladybirds been organised? So that means how has it been set out? Tick 1. The text gives facts about ladybirds organised into different sections for each topic. So that's not true, because the text does give facts about ladybirds, but these facts are not organised into different sections for each topic. It's not written like a report about ladybirds would be written, so we don't want to tick that option. Next, the information about ladybirds is organised like a story, with additional information at the end. So we know that the text is set out in paragraphs, so that's similar to how we would set out or organise a story. And we've not read the end yet, but if we read the end, perhaps we might find some additional information about ladybirds. So that's a possible option for us. It starts with facts about scale insects, and then explains the life cycle of the ladybird. So it does give us facts about scale insects at the start. It tells us that they were destroying the orange trees in California. But it doesn't explain the life cycle of the ladybird. It explains that the ladybirds were introduced to destroy the scale insects. So we can rule this option out as well. Our final option is the text gives information about ladybirds and ends with a story about scale insects. We can rule out this option as well. It does give us some information about ladybirds, but scale insects are mentioned right from the beginning, not just at the end. So the option that we need to tick is this one here. But just to check that there is additional information at the end, we can finish reading the text. So successful was the experiment that soon the Americans were breeding and distributing more and more ladybirds. Not only that, but before long, other countries around the world also decided to import and breed Australian ladybirds. Because of this remarkable result, we now know a lot more about these ladybirds. We know that scale insects are their favourite food, and that some ladybirds can eat large amounts in a day. Ladybirds also like to eat honeydew, nectar and pollen but they still need insects to help them grow and breed. So here they're giving us some additional information about ladybirds. Today, scientists are still studying ways of using insects to help control the pests and parasites that regularly destroy our plants and trees. As we learn about some of the damage that chemical pesticides can cause, it seems even more important to take care of small creatures that can help us protect our environment. There is an old superstition which says that ladybirds bring you luck. They certainly brought good fortune to the fruit growers of California. So we can be confident that we've answered the question correctly. The information about ladybirds is organised like a story because it's written in paragraphs which explain what happened and there's additional information about ladybirds at the end. Question 38. Tick to show which statements about ladybirds are true and which are false. First, they help protect the environment. If we look at the end of the text, it says, it seems even more important to take care of small creatures, so ladybirds, that can help us protect our environment. So that means this first statement is true. Next, we have, they only eat scale insects. Again, if we look towards the end, we can see that scale insects are their favourite food, but they also like to eat honeydew, nectar and pollen. So they don't only eat scale insects, they eat other things as well. So the second statement is false. They can survive on just nectar and pollen. 
Again, let's look back to the same paragraph. It says that they like to eat nectar and pollen, but they still need insects to help them grow and breed. So they can't only eat nectar and pollen, they need to eat insects as well. So this third statement is false as well. Finally, we have some people say that they bring you good luck. At the end of the text, it says, there is an old superstition which says that ladybirds bring you luck. So a superstition is something that people believe, even though there's not strong evidence for it. But ladybirds bring you luck is something that some people believe. So the last statement is true. Question 39. Where would you expect to find the text, California's Unlikely Warriors? Tick 1. On the front page of a newspaper, in a magazine about the natural world, in a children's fable about animals, in a travel brochure about California. So you would not find this text on the front page of a newspaper, because though it describes an event, it's describing something that happened long ago. And it also contains lots of different information from different times whereas a newspaper is always focused on current events, so what is happening now or what happened yesterday. So a newspaper might report that scale insects have attacked orange trees, or might report that ladybirds have helped kill the scale insects, but it wouldn't contain both, and it wouldn't have paragraphs at the end which just tell you facts about ladybirds. In a magazine about the natural world is the correct answer, because it's explaining something that happened in the natural world. It's about ladybirds eating scale insects. You wouldn't find this text in a children's fable about animals, because a fable is a story that gives you a message, or that teaches you something valuable. And this is just a report or giving you facts about something that actually happened, not a made-up story. And you probably wouldn't find this in a travel brochure about California, because it's something specific that happened to California long ago. It doesn't tell you what California is like now, or why you should visit California. And that's what you would find in a travel brochure. So, the correct answer to this question is in a magazine about the natural world.